All right, it is time for weekly reading planning. What's that? Hey everyone, it is Shannon and I'm super excited to be here today and to share with you my process of weekly reading planning. Um, this is something that I've been doing for quite some time now and it is a system that evolved at some point and but I've been doing it this particular way for at least a year. So I thought it might be a fun thing to share, especially if you also enjoy planning or if you are looking for a new way to plan your reading. Um, and uh, yeah, because I find it really Really helpful and um, especially in clarifying some of the books that sort of just hang on your TBR and also helps you keep track with um, you know things like longer term projects or your current TBR or library books or whatever are your goals I find it really helpful to sort of put all of those pieces together um, and uh, plot out what I am going to be reading in the upcoming week now I recognize that I do probably a fair amount of reading planning and maybe a fair amount more reading planning than some people really want to do and I totally get that it's um in a lot of ways I consider it a bit of an extra I consider it um, something that's helpful especially like you know especially in, in getting to my reading goals um, but I also enjoy planning so I do consider it fun so it's sort of like my entertainment is I is doing planning <laughs> But I know that not everyone wants to do it and not everyone necessarily wants to be this involved. So feel free to try it out or to, you know, use any one piece of this. And if it helps someone else, I am, I, that's all, that's really the goal um, and is to share because I find it's really helped me. So I thought, why not share? Because it might also really help you. Um, and so for this, I, it's a very, it's actually in a lot of ways a simple system um, in terms of looking at what you're reading, looking at your goals, and then of course, how do you get to meet your goals. It's very standard goal planning in that sense, but it is tweaked for reading. And um, I start all everything off by looking at Goodreads and looking at what I'm currently reading. I do tend to currently read a lot of books at the same time. Um, I'm not necessarily actively reading all of them, but I do have a lot on my currently reading. But that is where we start with because we start where we are, what's going on right now. So that's what I'm going to do in my tracker. I'm going to separate out the books that I'm reading on Goodreads into three categories. The first category is books I'm actively reading. So anything that I've read pages this month goes in that category. Um, and then I do another column on the far side where I put books that are on hiatus. Books that I have not read in a while and I'm not going to get to this week. And I don't worry about that. I know that some people like to shift that to a different shelf. If I shift it to another shelf, it ain't never getting read. It's never going to happen. So I don't mind having a large currently reading list. I leave them there. And those ones are just, they're on hiatus. I will get to them eventually or I will decide about them later. But I know that I'm not going to read them this week. Then there's all of the books that fall in between, and those are the question mark books. So my center column is a question mark column, and those are the books where I don't know what happened, I don't know what I'm doing, they're not books I'm actively reading, yet they're not books that are on hiatus. And that's the tricky bit. <laughs> those are the tricky books that can slip through the cracks, and that's why I like to notate them and take a look and see what I can do about it. So I am going to flip the view and share with you a little bit of my uh, writing this out and then we will get to what happens after that. Feel free to pull up your own Goodreads and separate out your books into these categories and see where they land. Okay so here we have my three categories of books that I'm actively reading, books that are question marks, and books that are on hiatus and I've pulled up my Goodreads here and let's see... Okay, so first up, we have a question mark book, Myth, A Very Short Introduction. This is something I started months ago, um, and I have not been reading it, but I don't consider it on hiatus. So right away, Myth goes in the question mark column. And then we have Moby Dick, which I am actively reading. And I will just, I'm going to try and find a hiatus book. So 100 Years of Canadian Cinema, that's a hiatus book. Um, I haven't read on it for a while. I was I had prioritized a different film book, and this one actually was one that I put to the side. So I actually technically could bring this back, um, but um, I think I'm just going to put it in hiatus for now, and then maybe next week I will be up to reading it. So 100. I'm just going to put 100. Canada. Maple Leaf. Ooh, horrible maple leaf. And I'm just going to continue to go down the entire list and fill this up.
So I got to the bottom of the list. Blade of the Immortal was the most recent book that I started, and it is the last one on the list. So now I ended up with nine books that I'm actively reading, five books that are question marks, and nine books that are on hiatus. I found a good hiatus example. This one is The Once and Future King. This is an omnibus, and um, I've read the first title, and I am putting it on hold until I pick up something else. I have a bunch of romance novels that I haven't finished, and some other stuff that I probably should DNF, but I don't feel like making that decision right now. So right now they're just on hiatus. Um, but yeah, so yeah, so these are the nine books I'm actively reading. <laughs> That's a lot even for me. And so let's look at the question marks. I'll, I'm going to flip around the camera and uh, I'll look at those five. Okay, so I am back and it's now time to look at those five titles that are in that question mark area. And I pulled three off the shelf and there is a very particular reason why I didn't get to these titles. And they are The Tin Flute by Gabrielle Roy, The Time Traveler's Wife by Audrey Niffenegger, and Fifty Shades Freed by E.L. James. These were all books that were on my April TBR, which um, I had the focus that month of reading the books like focusing on the books that I was currently in the middle of and that were part that were physical books so any physical books I was currently in the middle of I did quite well at that as um as a like mini project or a goal I ended up finishing eight out of 13 titles and I said as long as I had five or less I would be happy and so I have these three plus two others I didn't get to so it makes sense that I didn't read them this week because this is the very beginning of May um, and these were part of an April project so that's what happened that's why I didn't read them. They were part of an April project. I didn't get to them. So of course I didn't pick them up in the first week of May. Now that I'm aware of the fact that these are books that I've started yet not finished, I can make a decision about them in terms of what to do. Um, the first one, Gabrielle Roy's um, The Tin Flute, it's very good. It's a Canadian novel. It's uh, written was written in the 40s, It's um, but it's pretty heavy in terms of like it's uh, very dense and, um, you know, requires thinking and attention, but it's very good. Um, but I am focused on reading Moby Dick this month, and that sort of has, for me, the same sort of level of attention required to read this kind of text. So I'm going to put this one aside. I don't know if I'm going to put it on hiatus, um, but I am just going to leave it as a question mark for now. And then out of these two, I feel like I should pick one between The Time Traveler's Wife and Fifty Shades Freed. I'm currently in the middle of another romance novel right now, but I feel like I should make an attempt at one of these. They're both 500 plus page romance slash something novels. This is an erotic thriller and this is a time travel romance. So I feel like I should pick one to make progress on and out of the two I think this is a series ender so and I do want to see the movie um, but this one's on my sci-fi fantasy and weird list and I have not made much progress on that at all and that's a larger project. So I'm going to go with this one. So I'm going to shift The Time Traveler's Wife to my actively reading and try and get some reading on it this week. Whether I will or not, I'm not sure, but I'm going to shift it in that direction and cross my fingers that I end up reading some of it. Um, one of the other titles on my question mark was Myth, A Very Short Introduction. I'm working through a bunch of very short introductions this year for my Stacking the Series challenge, um, and I'm not progressing very, very well. Um, myth is one that I tend to read when I'm in transit or um, waiting in office, doctor's offices and stuff like that, so I don't get to it all that often. And although I'm really enjoying it, I'm not, I'm not feeling the super pull to it right now. So what I'm going to do instead is I am going to put this very short introduction, Stars, on my list, um, because the, the Myth one I'm reading as a digital edition on, on my Kindle. And I think if I read it in this tiny little edition, a physical edition, I might have more success. Um, and the goal, the larger goal with this series is to read them throughout the year. So it doesn't matter super much which ones I read when, just that I'm reading them. And this one I have out from the library, so it has a due date, so I'm gonna go with that. The last one that's on my question mark is Splinter Cell. This is one that was on my April TBR. I also had it on my Grinchathon TBR, so it was a readathon TBR book. I did not finish it before the end of the readathon. I did not finish it by the end of the month, and I am not enjoying it as much as I expected. So big shock that I haven't actually gotten to it. Um, so this one I'm a little stumped on because it's part of my book to film adaptation 2019 challenge. So I do want to read it. 
but I'm just not really feeling it this month, this week. Um, but I would like to finish it because I am reading one of one book to film adaptation a month. So, um, as I have a fair amount on the go this week, and I'm adding in these two, I think I'm just gonna let Splinter Cell stay on my currently reading, and I will revisit it next week. <laughs> So that's that's where we are right now and then so now what I do so that is that is the check-in we have now done the check-in we have made the decisions I now know there's nine books that I'm actively reading and then I'm adding two more to the mix and I can put these two away so I'm going to do that and then I'm going to pull out the physical editions of what I'm reading and um, now take a look at what my goals are so let's I'll be back in one moment. Okay, so these two go back on the shelf of books that I'm not currently working on right now, and they can just stay there until next week. And so there's the stack of books that I am currently reading or adding to the mix from the question mark pile. Okay, so now we have decided on the books that we are actively reading this week and the books that we've started but we're not working on this week. And as I mentioned before, because this is a weekly process, I don't stress too much about something that I just let carry over or don't even decide about week to week. I made some decisions, I'm pulling two books to the actively reading list, and the rest I will I will take a look at them next week and see how I'm feeling then. So now what we do, since we know where we are, we want to know where we're going. And to do that, it's time to pull out a monthly TBR list or your yearly goals list, or if you don't do, or, or things that have a due date, library books, anything that can be in the mix that is going to be added to the list. So I'm going to grab my library books and I will also share with you my monthly TBR. Before I go to the next step, I realize I do want to just take a quick look at the books that I'm currently reading all in one go, just so I have a sense of what I am reading before I look to what I'm going to add to my TBR. So I'm going to flip the camera and just do a quick pass of the books that I am reading that I've decided this week. These are some of the reads I'm working on. Okay, here is an overview of the books that I'm either actively reading or have decided to add in from the question mark category. I have separated these out by genre and I have added index cards for the titles that I'm reading digitally just so that I still remember I'm reading them even if I don't have a physical copy. So just a quick look, we have nonfiction here. I'm reading a book on sketching and then I'm adding in the book on stars. In terms of graphic works, I'm reading Help Laser Volume 4 and Blade of the Mortal Volume 5. In terms of romance, I'm adding in The Time Traveler's Wife this week, and also my current read is Do You Feel It Too? And then my big book of the month is Moby Dick. I'm reading that daily. I randomly added in Charlotte's Web because I needed some humanity after reading Lord of the Flies. <laughs> Uh, my current fantasy read is Sword Singer. My current sci fi read is 3001. And then on audio, By It's Lonesome is Grit. It's a nonfiction book. I only read one audio at a time, so it doesn't have anyone to hang out with. So those are the, I guess that's that, what's that? Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven books that I am actively reading. Now let's look to what I want to add in. <laughs> Okay, so now that I have looked at the books that I am actively reading, I'm going to take a look at my May TBR or my monthly TBR, or if you're doing this for a readathon or for your yearly goals. The, the point here is now to look at the books that you intend to read in the next little while. Um, so I'm going to take a look at my May TBR list and see how I'm doing for that. Um, I keep it on my uh, on an Excel spreadsheet and I list it actually in my May TBR video, but I'm actually going to show you my um, where it is in my track and uh, we can see how I'm doing so far. Okay, so here is a look at my May TBR as it is set up in my uh, tracker. What I do is I list all of the books or events or themes that I am working on this month, and then down the side I list whether I have started the book, whether it is an active read, whether I have finished it, and once finished, what the rating is. And so I filled this out, and very quickly, we can see by the X's, I have started 
five things and I'm actively reading four. Now, Enjoy the Library is a uh, more of an event than than a book, so but I am reading four out of I think it's 16 titles this month. So that's not too bad. So technically, I don't have to add anything, but when I look at this, I do see a couple of spots where if I wanted to add something I could. Like for example, these three titles are all social reads, um which I like to read separate from one another. And out of these three, um, I could add in Who Could That Be at This Hour, um, which is a kid's book. I don't want to start to read How to Break a Dragon's Neck because there hasn't been a live show for the earlier one. Becky from Beck's Books is reading through the How to Train Your Dragon series. And Metropolis is a science fiction book for the Lady Vaults this month, but I want to read 3001 first. So that tells me two things. One, not to add Metropolis yet, but also to be very active at reading 3001 because I have another science fiction book that I want to read. So I don't really think I need to add much here. I could add Who Could That Be at This Hour? And I could also re-add a romance because I have three romances I want to get to, but I already have two on my currently reading, so I'm not sure if I'm going to do that. So, But who could that be at this hour? could probably get added in. And uh, that is probably all that's going to get added in this month, which is uh, or this week, which is a bit weird, but it's, it's the way of it. I'm actually doing pretty good uh, on my monthly TBR. Okay, so that feels pretty anticlimactic to look at my TBR and then feel like I don't really need to add any titles this month, but it's still a step that's worth doing. You know, look at where you are and then look at what are your goals from this month? What can you add in? And then add those to the list. So it's just kind of funny that I'm not, I don't really need to do that this week. But that is the way of it. Um, so now what I'm going to do is look at the things that have limitations. So for this, it's books that you need to read by a certain period of time. Um, and for that, for me this week, it's going to be library books. So I am going to switch on over to look at the library books that I have out. I think I have them out for another two weeks. So probably I should try, if I want to read them all, which is always, you know, overly ambitious, I should probably try and add half of them <laughs> to the mix this week. So we'll see if I can do that. Okay, so these are the library books that I have out that I haven't started yet. And as before, I separated them out into genres. So I have two art books, three kids books, three mangas, two romances, and one urban fantasy. So now it's time to figure out which of these I should add to this week's reading. Okay, so I'm just going to go genre by genre and pick one from each, and we're going to see how we do. First up for art books, I have two, and one is Vermeer the Astronomer, the other is magic books and paper toys. Um, for one of, for my goals this month, I do need to read an art history book for which this is and this is not. So this one I'm going to read and this one I'm going to put aside for now and hopefully I can get to it next week. Um, in terms of romances, I have two choices here. I have Bad Bachelor by Stephanie London and Controlled Burn by Shannon Stacy. Um, this one's a bit smaller. Just well, you can't really tell. Um, this one actually is for my Stacking the Series Challenge, and it also is a romance that begins with the letter C, which is one of my goals for this month. So this one wins out, and um, I will hopefully get to Bad Bachelor, which is a reader nominee. Um, I will get to hopefully this one next week. Uh, next up, we have Kids Books. Now, this one, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add who could that be at this hour because this is one of my monthly uh, TBR priority reads. So we're going to put that to the side. And then I guess what I should do, I'm already reading Charlotte's Web, so I feel like maybe that's enough for kids' books. But I could choose one of these two, um, Goosebumps, Horrorland, Monster Blood for Breakfast, or... Double Spell by Janet Lund. Um, this one tonally feels more different than this. Like this feels, well, I don't know actually. I don't know. So I don't actually, I'm not sure whether I should just put these two as, actually, if I'm reading Charlotte's Web and I'm reading The Lemony Snickets, that's two kids books. So reading two kids books and putting two kids books aside. Kids books are also very short, so it is no problem to uh, work on them later. 
Now in terms of manga, I have Fruits Basket Volume 1, uh, I Am Hero, and oh, I can never say this one. Kakagur Yumi, a uh, compulsive gambler. Um, so I'm reading Hellblazer, uh, which is an urban fantasy type of book, which, and, and it is a bit heavier. So I think out of these, I'm going to pick Fruits Basket because it is like fun and light from what I can tell. When people talk about it, their faces really light up. So I think Fruits Basket is the way to go. And, um, and that just leaves Night Watch by Sergei Luk Yen Ek Enko, uh, which is an urban fantasy novel. I think I'm just going to leave this for this week. I'm already reading a fantasy novel, a science fiction novel. I think this one would just be one too many to add to the mix. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is going to put all of the books together and take a look at them in one go and see how realistic is this. <laughs> Actually, before I do that, I am actually going to put my library books back to their home so that they are out of the way, out of view, out of thought, out of mind. I have made my decision. These ones I'm going to get to at another time. And so it's time to look at the books that I am planning on reading this month. Week, week. Oh boy, this is a lot of books. This is a lot of books. So let's just go through them. First up, we have art books. So I have my practical and my history. Graphic Works, Hellblazer, Blade of the Immortal, and Fruits Basket. Blade of the Immortal will take me almost no time to finish, and I do go through Graphic Works pretty quickly, so I'm not too worried about that. Uh, my main read for the month is Moby Dick. I'm just reading that daily, so that's totally fine. Uh, these are my science fiction and fantasy picks. I'm just slowly working away at that, although 3001 is a bit more of a priority. Kids books, Charlotte's Web, will not take me long to finish that, and The Lemony Snickets, I do not think it'll take me long to finish that because it's got very large uh, text and pictures, and I'm looking forward to it, so I think that's okay. Uh, Nonfiction, as I mentioned, I only read one audiobook at the time, so that should be fine. Stars, <laughs> okay, so that's feeling a bit ambitious, to be honest, to add that in. And then romance. I just, I think this is too much for this week. So if I was going to cut anything, it would be one of these titles, but they all so suit different needs. Like, to be honest, I'm more than halfway through this, so I feel like I should stick with it. That being said, it's not really for a project, and these two are both for projects. So that's, that is the sticky point. That is actually, out of all of this, where I should cut is the romance but I can't figure out what the best thing to do is. It should be The Time Traveler's Wife because the Shannon Stacy is actually a library book and I feel like I am never going to get to A Time Traveler's Wife. Hmm. The reality is I won't finish all three of those this week, so it goes. Okay, that's the one I'm cutting. <laughs> Does that make me feel better? <laughs> so all of these go on the books I'm gonna work on this week. Doesn't mean I'm necessarily going to finish them, but these are the ones that I'm going to work on. And back it goes, as it has so many weeks before. Sigh. I try not to get frustrated by moments like that um, because I really wanted to add it back to this week, but the truth is it actually is not as much of a priority as a library book. This is why it's important to lay everything out, whether it's physically or in a spreadsheet or, you know, in um, uh, digitally, it doesn't matter, on a piece of paper, because I feel like if I let that one go for this month, I have a greater chance of success for finishing the other two books. Finishing two romance novels in a week is not something that I tend to be doing anymore, um, but I can probably finish one and start the other. And I would rather be successful at that than try for all three and know I'm gonna fail. So, and I feel differently, like how I feel about those kinds of things is different. Um, if it was for a readathon, um, I would push harder. If it was a social read and I was reading it with other people, I would push harder. But these are three books that I'm reading and you know, two of them are part of projects, but there's no, you know, <laughs> there's no, like they're, they're year long projects. So I got lots of time as much as I would like to make progress on it this week. It doesn't have to be this week. Whereas reading a library book 
has a deadline. So yeah, adjustments along the way are really, really helpful. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to look at all of the individual titles and look at them in the in three different ways. I separate things out to threes a lot. Um, and so now what I'm, with those three things are the books that I am going to work on finishing this month or this week, the books that I plan on just progressing on this week, and the books I need to start this week. And then because I have some kids books and shorter books, if there's anything I'm going to start and finish. So that is the next step. Look at each of the titles and where do they fit. Um, I usually start with what I plan on finishing this week. So let's see what ends up in that category. So normally I would just separate out these titles on paper, but as I have everything laid out here, I'm just going to physically sort the different books into the books that I plan on finishing, the books that I'm going to progress on, and then anything I need to simply start this week, and then the odd occasion of whether it's something I plan on both starting and finishing. So let's take a look. All right, here we go. So the Vermeer art book, this is less than 100 pages, so I plan on starting and finishing that. Mastering sketching, I plan to progress on that. I'm reading a little bit every day. Hellblazer, I think I can finish this week, so I'm going to put that in the finishers category. Fruits Basket, I think I could finish it this week. Um, manga does tend to be fast reads, so I'm going to both start and finish it. And Blade of the Immortal, I can finish that today, so that goes in the finishers. Looking onto Romance, I have Controlled Burn, so this is one that I plan on starting today. Do You Feel It Too is another romance novel. Um, I have to finish it before I can start Controlled Burn, so it's not only a finisher, it is a priority finisher. So I'm going to put that just a little bit different. Um, and then we have Moby Dick. I just plan on progressing on Moby Dick because it is my focus read for the month and it is 650 pages, so it goes into the continuation pile. Charlotte's Web definitely can finish Charlotte's Web this week. Who could that be at this hour? I can definitely start and finish that this week. Um, stars, I am only going to commit to starting it, even though it is very short. I've been not having much luck with the very short introduction, so, but it goes in the start pile. What else do we have here? Grit is my audiobook. I could probably push to finish this this, this week, but I don't want to stress about it, and I have lots of reading to do, so I'm just going to put it in the continue or progress category. Same with Sword Dancer. I wish I could finish this this week because I really do have lots of fantasy that I want to read this month, but I feel like I would rather enjoy it, so I am just going to put it in the progress pile. And that leaves us with 3001, and as I mentioned earlier, this is a title that I need to finish before I can start another science fiction title, so it's not only a finisher, it's a priority. Well, it's not a finisher, but it is a priority read, so I'm going to put that with Do You Feel It Too? Um, and so yeah, so there are my books separated out by category. Now it's time to uh, put that all together in my um, tracker and uh, notate what is going where. And here are my piles, my books to finish, my books to start and finish, my books to progress on, my books to start, and then I have one priority finish and one priority continue. So I'll, now I'm going to transfer all of this information into my tracker and um, I'll get a sense of what I'm reading this week. Okay, so now I am going to sit here with my tracker. I actually did add in the two from my TBR. So I added in the Lemony Snickets and the Romance title for Controlled Burn. Usually if I have to brainstorm or work through anything, I do it on this side. Um, if I have a readathon that I'm preparing for, or if I'm finishing, if I'm working on multiple titles, um, like say I'm reading five fantasy novels and I don't know what to do, that happened to me a couple weeks ago, I would brainstorm and work it through here. Um, because I was doing Doing this on video, I ended up not using this space very much because I talked it through. <laughs> like when I had the kids, too many kids books and didn't know what to do, or the too many romances and didn't know what to do. Normally, I would end up working that through here, but I worked it through with you. Um, so what I'm going to do is on this side of the page, I'm going to write reading plan and the dates, and then I'm going to write out the books that I want to finish, the books that I want to start and finish, 
the books that I want to progress on, and the books that I want to simply start. Anything that was a priority this month, like Do You Feel It Now or 3001, I'll make sure to put at the top or near the top of the individual list. So I'm going to go fill this out and I'll be back in a sec. And here is the list. So I have the date, the books that I want to finish, four titles, including one priority, books to start and finish, three titles, books to progress on, five titles with two asterisks, and those books to start, which is just two titles. So that is what I am working with this week. I'm just going to take a moment to share some thoughts on the asterisks and uh, tell you the very, very, very last step. My goodness, I did not realize how many steps there were. Okay, so as you can see, that actually is a fair amount of titles, and um, I just want to take a moment for the to talk about the books that had asterisks, which are books that are priority reads. So I had th I have three of them this this time round. One is Moby Dick. This one, my um, priority is to read it by the end of the month, and I'm currently just working on reading it every day. And I have been keeping that up as we're only on the fourth or the fifth of the month, but. That is the goal here, it's just to keep it in mind, and because it's my priority read, I'm reading it first. When I sit down to do my reading, this is what I grab first, and so far that's been working. The other two priority titles are Do You Feel It 2, which is a romance title, and 3001, The Final Odyssey. Now if you like to tab things off, this would be the time to do that. This would be the time I would do it if I had these in physical editions. So I will look at, um, I'm reading both of these digitally, so I will look at seeing how much I need to read a day-ish and put that as the goal. So I think with Do You Feel It Too, I have about 45% less left, um, and so I'm going to aim for 7% a day. 7 times 5 is 35, that's not enough percent, so I guess 8% a day, so that's 40%. The rest will be like promo for the next book or whatever for some other thing. Um, so yeah, so I guess the goal for this one will be 8% a day. And then for 3001, um, I only just started this one and it does take longer, so I don't want to push too hard. So I think what my goal will be for the week will be to finish, uh, to get to half of it. I think if I finish one science fiction book in the first half of the month and one science fiction book in the second half of the month, that'll be good. So my aim will be to get to 50%, and so that will be the goal for this week. Um, as I mentioned, if I had digital or physical editions, I might tab them off uh, with flags and do it that way, but these are both digital, so I'm just gonna do it with math, and I'm gonna notate here on my sheet that that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm actually gonna do that right now, get to 50%. And then 8% a day. The last step, because there's just one very last step, is I actually am going to transfer this information about books I want to finish, start, the percentages. I'm going to transfer all of those onto an index card. And I'm going to keep that index card either in Moby Dick, because I know I'm reading that every month, or more likely I tend to keep it in my Kindle. And that way I have one sheet with me at all times with my reading, I always, like, my Kindle's always with all of my books, even if I'm not reading anything digitally, it just, this is, this, this needs to be close. So um, I'm going to transfer all this information onto here, and uh, then I'll put it in my Kindle. And there's actually one more thing that I do, <laughs> and I do it at the end, and I intentionally leave it to the end. So I'm going to write this up, show you what it looks like, and then share, you, share with you the very, 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 very last step. Okay, so here's my completed index card. I have the books that I plan to finish, and I put them in the order of ease. So Blade of the Immortal is the easiest, and then Charlotte's Web, then Hellblazer, then Do You Feel It Too? I don't know if anyone else is reading those four books this week. <laughs>
<laughs> Let me know if you are. Okay, and then the books that I want to start and finish, same thing, Ease of Order, uh, Vermeer, uh, Fritz Basket, Who Could That Be at This Hour? To Start, Stars, and Controlled Burn, and then the books I want to progress on, including if there's any notation, right? Like I want to read Moby Dick Daily, and then... Um, 3001, I want to get to 50%. And so I have my Kindle here, and inside you can see that I have my list from last week. And so I can put that aside. And so this fits oh so perfectly inside. So there I am ready to go for this week, and I just have one, one thing left. So the very, very, very last step that I do is I have my reading plan that I made this week, of course, but the last thing I do is actually fit, flip back to my reading plan from last week and see how I did. I do a check mark for all of the books that I finished or all of the goals that I hit, um, and sometimes I X things out if it just totally didn't work. Um, and, you know, do shorthand or make notes to myself. It's kind of weird, actually, but that's what I do. And I leave this to the very, very end intentionally because I don't want it to, if I don't read all of the things, I get really, I'm really achievement oriented, so I want to hit all the marks. Um, and if I do this first and I only got four out of five on something, I'm all grumpy to begin with, but I know what my plan is for this week and I'm excited about having a plan for this week. So being able to go back and look and see how I did in the previous week is just sort of icing on the cake and it's fun. And for some reason, it really works for me to do this at the very, very end, as opposed to start with looking at, did I meet? last week's goals or not because to be honest there's nothing I can do about that now I can just look to what my goals are for the future so it's one of those weird situations where it, it feels like it would make sense to start there but I have found in my experience it doesn't start and look at where you are now what are you currently reading do you, how are you how are those working out for you do you want to transfer some of those from high like weird hiatus question mark mode to active reads or do you want to DNF some stuff what do you want to read in the future and go from there? Like for me, that just works so much better. But as the little treat to myself, because I like checking things off lists, I leave this to the very end. So I'm just going to go through and see how I did from last week and then get on to my reading for this week. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's going to be a bit of a long one and a rambly one and probably some, you know, not the best edit moments, but it is a process and um, it is a process that I wanted to share. So hopefully it is helpful or at the very least entertaining to see what I go through every week. <laughs> In terms of my reading planning, I would love to hear what you, how you do your planning, if you would like to implement any of these um, different kinds of plannings uh, to your reading plans. I'd be curious to hear how that goes. And if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, because I do have a couple of them in the works, um, but it felt like this was the right place to start. So I'm going to get to see how I did. And uh, yeah, so thank you so much for watching. And I hope you happy reading and happy planning, of course. I have to say, last week, I did pretty well, except for that. <laughs>